I had a friend of mine who called me up this week, and I, I see this friend maybe once every two or three years. And he was a good friend. He and I went to, I went to Christian Christian Center before, about 20 years ago, 21 years ago. And I used to work on a PR committee, publicity committee. And what we did, it was a men group. And what we did, we walk up the men to the meetings and in the morning time and kind of talk to them about things. And at the time, long story short, I was lost. I was insecure. I had doubt. I had fear. Uh, I was reading the Bible. I, was, I would go to the men's fellowship. I would give, you know, offering, tithes and offerings. When my little income tax come in, you know how when you're black, you can't wait until you get your income tax check so you can pay your bills? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do white people do that too? Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't know white people couldn't wait until income tax time. <laughs> but I would get my little income tax and I would give 10% uh, uh, of that to the church, right? And sometimes it would be like $500 or $600. And I'm thinking, wow. I'm giving the church more money than I got left over out of my little income tax, right? But anyway, I was insecure, so um, once a month, I think, the preacher will have a meeting for men only so you can ask the preacher's questions, the, pre the head preacher, Fred Price, questions about yourself and about anything, right? So this one time I went to this meeting, and I was so lost, and I was praying in other tongues, uh, what I thought. They told me to do it. I did it. It didn't work, but I did it. I would read the Bible. So long story short, we were at this breakfast. And so they opened it up for questions. And the guys were getting up asking the preacher, how did you get your last name? How you come up with this middle name? How, you know, all kind of dumb questions. Here I am just sitting here. Can't wait to ask my question. So I got up and I asked the man, Fred Price, how do you be a man? I said, I don't feel like a man. And I don't have... You know, I don't have the courage I need as a man. How do you be a man? And then he read me something from the... And I'm telling you, it was about 40 to 50 people there, more, maybe more. <laughs> and so he read something out of the Bible to me. And I said, but that doesn't help me. I, I read that already. And then he got a little irritated, and he read something else out of the Bible. And I said, well, that's not helping either. I already know the Bible. I read that. And then he got mad, irritated. You can see that he was irritated. And he said, well, that's all I have to tell you. And if the word said it, that's it. And I'm like, but that's not helping me, sir. And this is my time to ask you. And at that time, the rest of the men, many other men in the, in the audience went off on me too. Mm -hmm. They started going off, right? So I just went and sat down. But this friend of mine, he and I became friends while, while working there. So we became, we became kind of close friends. He came by, he called me up this weekend. He said, I want to get with you. I need some of your time. I need to tell you something. So I need about two or three hours of your time on Saturday. I'm thinking, two or three hours? I know I haven't seen you in two years, but come on, man. But I said, all right. <laughs> so long story short, he came by. And it, it could have taken three hours, but it took two. Um, he told me, he said... Um, you know, you know me well enough to know that I've been trying to do all I can to find God. I, I read the Bible. You know, I was just so committed to the church. I read the Bible. I get up every morning. I pray. I do everything. He said, if any one person has done all it takes to find God, I'm that person. And he said, I never was able to find him. He said, I, I, he said when I would go to church, we would have those breakfasts, or if he went out with couples at the church, they were getting divorces, or they were fighting, the men were weak, and, and he saw that even in relationships at this particular church, that they were not working, like the brothers and sisters were not working in their marriages and things like that. And he, and he told me that about three or four years ago, he had a spiral meningitis. You know what that is, right? Spinal. Spinal meningitis. And that, and when you get that, it, it just, it cripples your whole body. Everything stopped functioning in the body. And so he had that. And he was in a coma for, uh, for a while, three days, I think. I forgot how long, but he was in, in a coma for a while. And he came out of the coma and uh, his whole body had shut down. And he couldn't function. So he had to resign from his job so he can't work because everything shut down. 
and the, and the doctor had, had predicted that he was going to die. They told him that most people that get that, they don't survive. And he said that, uh, so he left the hospital, long story short, went home, and he was just confined to the bed. Couldn't even get up to use the bathroom or anything, so his mother and sister had to take care of him. And he, he said that it prevented him from going to church or anything. And long story short, because he could not leave his room or leave the house, couldn't go to church, couldn't, he lost his hearing too. He got like a ringing in the, in the head, you know, like, I guess it caused that kind of problem. Now he can hear a little better. He has those ear things on. But he said that the one thing that happened to him because he was confined to his home, could not talk to anybody, um, that time alone by himself caused him to realize that his problem was that he hated his mother. And he said he, and he lived with his mother. He's like 50-something years old still living with his mother, right? He said... He said the thing that kept him from finding God was that he had no love and he was never told that he had no love. The preachers didn't say it, no one, but God allowed him to see that he hated his mother. And he said at three years old, his mother uh, became ill and was unable to take care of him and his sisters, and he resented her for that. But he said that when he saw that he resented his mother, it set him free. And he said, now he, he said, you know what? I don't even have to read the Bible anymore. He's like, the foremost thing for me now is love. I, I, I didn't know I didn't have love. I thought I had love, but I had hatred. Now I have love. And he said that whenever I even think about what I want, God just does it for me just like that. He just does it. And he's, his body is now healing. He can now walk. They had said he wasn't going to even survive. He's now walking and driving, and he's coming alive again because he's gotten rid of that hatred that he had in his heart. And he discovered this without anyone telling him that. But because he had a desire to know the truth, God, uh, and he had this time by himself, not distracted by anything else. And he was telling me that he had listened to some tapes about other preachers and things. But when he wasn't able to hear anything or do anything, that's when he discovered that he had anger in his heart for his mother. And, he, and God took it away, and now he can live again. Isn't that amazing? Yes. And, and I say all that to say that you need love. Love, perfect love is the answer to life. It's everything. And the problem is, he even said to me, you know, I hate to say it, Jesse, but these preachers are not doing, they don't know what they're talking about. Uh, they, they don't understand. They don't know how to, a simple thing like love, they don't even know how to bring you to that point. They don't even talk about the hatred that we have for our families and how we need perfect love because they don't see it. Right? And you know what happened? This is another thing I want to add. I had to sit there two long hours to hear this boy tell me all this stuff. <laughs> two hours. And the devil trying to tell me to jump in and say this and do that you know, ride on it, add my little stuff, I couldn't do it. There was something there that would not let me do it. I just had to hear him out. And he was so filled with joy and telling the story, he was just boohooing and everything. You know how when you cry, mama liked to hug you and pat you on the back? Yes. I just sat there, looked at him cry and go through everything he had to go through in that two hours. And it blessed me like nothing else before. But it's the love that people need and they don't have it. Most people don't have love. And that's what the problem is. That's why I said if you have any little anger in your heart at all, you're separated from God. You have fear, you have doubt, you're uncertain, you, you don't have peace. This guy has peace now that he never had before because he was forced. He, oh, he told me, thank God for, the, for this disease. He was like, he was happy that he was like, it took all that for God to get me alone so I could just hear from him and stop all my other stuff I was trying to do. Isn't that amazing? You need love. I'm telling you folks, you're never, ever, ever going to experience this perfect love until you can get rid of your, until you overcome that anger. You've got to forgive. You cannot have any resentment in your heart toward anybody and be born again of God. You got to let it go before you can enter into the kingdom of, of heaven.